Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a tiling window manager in Solus. This is part of a greater experiment to see if I could, I don't know, actually switch to Solus, considering that I'm kind of a tiling window manager junkie. And I'd like to just bring all of my configurations over to this distro. So let's get right into Solus XFCE Beta Edition. If you haven't subscribed, please consider clicking that button in the bell right next to it. The very first thing I'm going to do is install some packages mainly NeoVim and some minimalist packages that I'm going to eventually need when I install Spectre WM. It's also going to automatically update the system. I'll be back when it's done. Okay, now let's take a look at the bash RC file. You will notice that it says source, user, share, defaults, Etsy profile. So I'm going to CD into that directory and take a look at the profile script. It basically says any bash files that are nested inside user share defaults Etsy profile D or Etsy profile D or bashrc.d directories, go ahead and execute those scripts. Now let me just see if there is a bashrc.d directory. No, there isn't. So, I could make that directory with a simple make dir command followed by the bashrc.d file. But I don't really want to do that because I've already altered the configuration to my personal workflow that I've had for many years without taking anything away from their bash configuration. So I'm going back into the Etsy directory and I'm going to remove the profile D directory because I'm going to replace it. I'm going to make a build directory inside my home slash desktop directory so that I can pull down my configuration from my GitLab page. I'm going to first install git. Curl and wget are installed by default, but somehow git is not. It's kind of strange there. Then I'm going to install ESA because I use that instead of LS. Now I can clone my bash solus repository from my GitLab and rename bash solus profile D. Maybe I should have named the file profile D, you think? Now I'm going to move it to my user share defaults Etsy directory. At this point, I'm going to check for any errors. There are none. So we're good to install Kitty and Alacrity really quick because I'm going to need those. I'm going to pull down some scripts and files I have on GitLab. Mainly D menu, Alacrity, Kitty, NeoVim, Spectre WM, PyCom, and Wallpapers. And I'm going to move them to my .config folder. All of them except for Wallpapers and D menu. I want to use Alacrity from here on out, but the letters are really bad. I'm going to install source code pro. I'm basically just going to pull it down. There are a couple other fonts I will be downloading momentarily. I'm just going to push those to the user share fonts directory and run the FC cache command to source all of the fonts in the system. Now Alacrity should just work. Let's open a new instance of it, and voila, it works.
Now I can move the wallpapers to use our shared backgrounds folder. Let's take a look inside that directory. Here's where all of the wallpapers are generally stored on Linux. Let's now install Hack Nerd Fonts in Noto Sans CJK. Hack Fonts will show my icons in NeoVim and Noto Sans CJK are the Chinese characters in my Spectre WM bar. You'll notice that I have an alias in my bash script to extract or unzip this file by placing an EX in front of the file. Let's move all the fonts to user share fonts by using the MV followed by the asterisk dot TTF command that basically says to move all of the files that end with TTF and move them to the user share fonts directory. We can source the fonts like we did the last time and we are done. At this point, we should install all the files we need for compiling the software. First off, we're going to install all the packages with system.devel. That's like base devel in Arch Linux or build essentials in Debian. Then we are going to install some packages that I need in order to compile some files that I have cloned. We can do simple Google searches to clone the Spectre WM and dozen two repositories because we are going to be compiling them from source. Dozen two might surprise you, but it's part of my Spectre WM configuration, as well as other minimalist desktop environments and tiling window managers. The first thing I'm going to do is change the name of DMenu Solarize to just DMenu. Now, I don't need to do this, but I like to do it for organization purposes. Then I'm going to run make, and then sudo make clean install. Most suckless utilities can either use install or clean install as options. I like clean install because I've had problems in the past with DWM that clean install fixed. So I tend to do this on all suckless software. Next, I'm going to compile a Spectre WM from source by navigating the Spectre WM slash Linux directory, then sudo make and sudo make install. Now I'm going to do the same with dozen two. I will just enter the directory and run sudo make and sudo make and install. It isn't the cleanest installation, but it works. Now, I'm going to log out and log back in to Spectre WM and finish everything in there. I just need to alter a couple of files and fix NeoVim and I think we're good to go. I guess my keyboard isn't working for some reason and I'm going to have to restart. Okay, so after a few times restarting, I couldn't get the keyboard to work, which kind of surprises me. So I'm going to finish doing everything in XFCE4 and go back in to finish it up. Let's configure NeoVim. There are a few bugs in here today, but I need to run Lazy. And recently, Lazy has run a little slow in my virtual boxes. I'm not really sure why, so I'm going to speed this up a little.
I'm going to have to figure out this error at a later time because I have Lua Rocks installed. And I'm going to just go ahead and go with this error in place. I can figure this out later. So now let's get into the .config Spectre WM folder and let's go ahead and alter the autostart.sh file because Solus doesn't have the nitrogen package but it does have Fay, so I'm going to use Fay instead and I'm just going to point my wallpapers directory and use my GTO picture. I have installed nitrogen from source before on another distro and it was pretty complicated. So I understand why they may not have this package, especially if no one really uses it. So far, this is only one of a couple of really obscure and I would say even irrelevant packages that have been missing so far. Now I'm going to remove the slock error that you saw when I entered Spectre WM the first time. So I'm just going to go into the spectrewm.conf file and I'm just going to find the area where it says program and I'm going to render the bracket lock to false. And I'm just going to log out and log back in. Okay. Okay, everyone, I just got done messing around with some things and I will say I'm not even sure what I did to fix this, but it's up and running with a functional keyboard. The bar is the correct size and everything. This is rather hilarious because this is like the fourth time I've actually done this on a virtual box, you know, in order, you know, in prep for this video. And this is the first time I've had any problems with Spectre WM on Solus, so it's interesting. <laughs> I think this is good for us to see that we might face a few obstacles along the way, but they are all workable. So what are my impressions and more importantly, could I live in this distro? Yeah, I could easily live here. I plan on installing Hyperland and setting up distro boxes and bottles next on Solus in order to complete my overall impression of whether or not I could live here. Be on the lookout for those videos. So, what do you think? Could you live in Solus? Leave me a comment. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? I just have to say, this was an incredibly fun video to make. Let me know if you'd like to see more like it. You can binge watch my stuff. Or watch my latest video. Later, nerds.